Hi, my name is Maria Stefoni, and in this video blog I'm going to talk about exhibition, distribution and promotion, and the concepts around these three different stages. To begin with, I would like to say that in my mind, the steps at the heart of this module, exhibition, distribution and promotion, should be placed in a different order. In the first instance, we have promotion. We use promotion in order to raise an audience's interest and attention about our films. Secondly, there are the distributors. They create a marketing strategy and package up films in order to sell them. Last but not least, there is the retail part of filmmaking, called exhibition. This is where investments come back, production costs hopefully get covered, and profit can be made. Exhibition, distribution and promotion all aim to build an audience and bring the film to its viewers or vice versa. What does each of these mean exactly to a film school undergraduate such as myself? Or how should we approach these concepts? What is promotion? Promotion can begin as soon as the film's first pre-production stages occur. With the internet at hand, we are taught that the sooner we promote our film, the better, as getting our film known to people ahead of time creates an interest and gives the movie a presence before it's even released. As an independent filmmaker, film promotion is time-consuming because we have to do the majority of work ourselves, but it is still one of the most important things we can do. It affects how our film is going to be received and funding strategies can also rely on people's interest when it comes to crowdfunding with platforms such as Kickstarter or Indiegogo. The Blair Witch Project and Paranormal Activity are renowned for having created an internet fever and for bringing massive profit for micro-budget films. Both these movies kept their costs to a minimum by using very basic camera equipment, unknown actors and shooting in limited locations, where the action is driven by a well-written storyline. Their marketing campaigns have shown the invaluable impact and significance promotion has over a film's success. Another recent example on how a film's promotional campaign can breathe life into a movie Starring a largely unknown superhero is the recent 20th Century Fox movie Deadpool. Making Deadpool an R-rated movie meant a huge risk for the studio, because it was moving away from what had ensured Hollywood's financial success for decades. Teenagers have been a significant target audience ever since Star Wars was first released. However, the movie's marketing team hoped to use social media to offset their risk. An equally inventive strategy was adopted by Blinkbox when promoting Game of Thrones Season 3. Blinkbox had received rights to air the premiere of the new Game of Thrones season in 2013, as well as hosting the second season the year before. To promote the season, they've decided to create a 40-foot dragon skull, which they placed on the Charmouth Beach in Dorset, thus tapping into the popularity of the beach, which was already famous for its prehistoric fossils. My own experience with social media has to do with marketing my final year film, Medina. In addition to establishing a presence on social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter, our team also launched the film's fundraiser on Indiegogo. Soon after, and because the film story was set in Malta, we received an open invitation to join the Maltese crowdfunding platform, ZAR, which helped raise half of the budget needed. What is distribution? Film distribution is a highly dynamic sector in the film industry, which deals with launching and sustaining movies. It allows for movies to reach the viewing audience as well. If your feature film gets noticed by top-listed film festivals, such as the ones accredited by an organization called the International Federation of Film Producers Associations, or ones like the Los Angeles Short Film Festival, Short Corner at Cannes or Sundance, you should be receiving calls and queries from acquisition executives, theater and studio representatives about distribution deals. If you have been shortlisted for festivals of a lower rank, however, it is going to take more effort on your part to do well at covering costs and achieving profit. This means that you will need to really make your way into sales agents' field of view by finding comparable titles in the industry that have done well and are similar to your own work. I have found that you can then use this information to leave companies that are not a match for your field of interest to one side and find those who have distributed films similar to yours in the past. Their track record of films should make sense to you and be something you would be proud to associate yourself with. 
These are the more likely partner to suit your needs. Distribution companies create and execute a marketing plan that aims to define and reach target audiences. They then create a movie package which they use to pitch for cinema chains and other exhibition environments. After signing a distribution deal, there is an array of options for the film's release and exhibition. Ever since the digital revolution took place, more and more internet distribution platforms have replaced the classic theatrical release. Today, we can start out our own marketing plan and figure out who we are going to distribute our film to long before the movie is finished. Ideally, we will start at the beginning of the process and build up a small database where new content is readily available to be passed along with every opportunity that arises, such as press releases. Various online platforms for self-distribution are the iTunes, BitTorrent, Vimeo, Netflix, Amazons, CreateSpace and much more. Amongst the wealth of short films produced every year, one aspect of film exhibition has remained unchanged in many years. The need to showcase your work at film festivals. Film festivals are at the cusp between film production and distribution. The festival circuit works as a playground for filmmakers that helps them create a name for themselves, get their movie noticed, interact with other filmmakers and build new working relations. Ultimately, film festivals help filmmakers make their work heard and also get signed for distribution. What we ultimately want to achieve as filmmakers is to share our films with the viewing audience. For this purpose, we have exhibition as the final part of the filmmaking process, where our film reaches its target audiences and expenses and investments are being recuperated. We can look at exhibition as the retail part of making films, where tickets are sold and split into shares, each share corresponding to the investors involved. The exhibitor and distributor are the ones who take back their investments first, and are also the last ones to make these expenditures, so the risk involved is really quite low for them. Let's make our way back to better understand how the industry standard of today for film distribution and exhibition in particular has come into place. For this, we need to travel back to the first public showing of film by the Lumiere brothers. It cost one franc per patron. It took place in December 1895 at Salon Indien du Grand Café. This first audience contained 35 spectators and within a month their projections brought about them 7,000 francs per week, thus giving birth to the beginnings of commercial film as we know it. From migratory displays of theatrical reenactment, of subjective historical recollections, such as Buffalo Bill's Wild West Traveling Picture Show, which began in 1883 and traveled across the US and Europe, we moved to the Nickelodeon, which functioned as a multi-purpose theater from 1900 until 1915. The Nickelodeon was the very first establishment to cater to the working class of America. Usually placed in coverted storefronts, it featured motion pictures, illustrated songs and slideshows. These multi-purpose theatres were soon to be short-lived. The arrival of storyline films with longer runtimes soon to be followed by the talkies and the increasing popularity of these new apparitions determined the need for larger auditoriums and consequently meant the dissolution of the Nickelodeons. In the meantime, as a response to the overwhelming popularity of the French film equipment and production company Pathé, which was operating worldwide, Thomas Edison established the Motion Picture Patterns Company in 1908, simply known as the Trust. It aimed for complete control over the industry. To compete with their agenda, foreign studios put into place roadshows across the nation, this gave rise to a new type of producers who noticed the attraction behind these practices. They were known as the independents. One of these was arguably the most successful one, called Adolf Zucker. Adolf Zucker with Paramount succeeded in achieving complete monopoly over the production, distribution and exhibition of films, which is known as vertical integration. The Paramount case in 1948 brought about Hollywood's renaissance, which lasted approximately from 67 to 1979. The Paramount case was the trial that brought the dissolution of the oligopoly that the big studios had set up to that point. 
Progress in technology set in place rapid paradigm changes in terms of how films have been produced and shown to the audiences. Today, internet is a key element in how independent filmmaking is evolving as an innovative cinematic universe. It allows a more personal space to emerge between filmmakers and their viewers. This represents a huge shift from how films were being distributed and shown in the past when a few giants monopolized the market in a very rigid and controlled environment that made up the entertainment industry of the old Hollywood studio system. We now have the national chain cinemas, also known as multiplexes, that are most likely to show mainstream blockbusters, versus independent exhibitors, small theater venues, local cinemas, where the program will depend on their target visitors. They tend to cater for art house and foreign film enthusiasts. The film festival circuit is by far one of the best ways to get your work noticed. It is the place where films like Memento, Reservoir Dogs or Soderbergh's revolutionary Sex, Lies and Videotape have been displayed and amounted great critical recognition. It is also where they would find their distribution deals.